What is good? We're back and we're ready to roll. We got some fresh blood. Snoogs, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing good, guys. Thank you. It's been a pleasure being able to jump on the pod and talk ball with some ball knowers. I've been a big fan of the pod for a while now. I've been watching you guys for a few years, so I'm excited to finally get to pick your brain a little bit. Yeah, wow. Well, we're we're mostly excited to have you here because I know you're you're at least big on huge on one of these guys. Austin, are you in your mom's basement? What's going on there? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> dude, I'm gonna get roasted the uh, YouTube. <laughs> comments now no dude I, i'm kind of moved in with my girlfriend but uh that's uh that's another story yeah but uh i know background's not quite as oh, it's all good but you Just... still got my big beautiful face so yeah well you usually it. got those nice little floating shelves behind you so. <laughs> yeah, dude. modern look guy keeps right. it clean that's aesthetic. right baby <laughs> all right boys What's up, casey Let, let's get into it um Real quick before we get going, Snoog, where can we find uh, the podcast and and all your uh, information at? Yeah, if you just follow me at FFSnoog on Twitter, you can find my podcast, everything, my Patreon, everything in my bio, the Smash Except podcast. We're doing tons of Dynasty stuff, Rookie Talk, Fantasy Football stuff in general. We, We post every Tuesday, so you can find more of my work there. And then my Twitter, I'm just constantly posting out rookie threads right now more so because we're getting into that rookie hype mm-hmm. but marvin harrison jr thread just went out today gonna have roman wilson malachi corley going out the next few days and then we're gonna jump into the quarterbacks and running backs and kind of filter through that position but almost done with the wideouts pre-draft pre-combine rankings going out soon before the next week or so for the wider receiver position and then we'll jump into running backs and quarterbacks so Love it. Love it. Well, we're, we're that, that combine got on us quick. Uh, yeah. So let's talk about a couple names that I think in our community are probably well-known names at this point. Uh, but maybe the, you know, the normal person watching these videos maybe isn't quite caught up to it. Uh, some names that you might need to know. Now, I think all three of these guys were big risers from the senior bowl here. All the guys that we're going to talk about now, they're not all seniors, uh, but uh, you know, senior bowl added a new caveat there. So, uh, I think let's let's start off with Baker because I know Snoog, you're you're a big Baker guy. Um, so he's he's via Bama, so you know he's got the pedigree, and then transfers to UCF, gets the big uptick, and I think a lot got on way more people's radar from the Senior Bowl. Uh, had a really nice twenty three, a decent twenty two. Right now, mock draft database only has him at a fifth round pick, but that seems a little light right now. I think that number is going up. Uh, Hit us with it because he's six one two oh eight. So I think you're getting maybe potentially a prototypical kind of X receiver here. Is that is that kind of the way you see it? And, and tell us what you've been seeing and what you've been liking about Baker. Yeah, J- Javon Baker's a guy that I didn't know much about him at Bama, but I did know who he was. I know he was playing in an absolutely stacked wide receiver room with Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle, John Mechie, Jamison Williams there in 2021. It makes sense kind of why he transferred, especially like the COVID year hit in. He transfers and immediately produces at a high level, 700 plus yards in year one with UCF. Like I couldn't even tell you who UCF's quarterback is. And then he has an outstanding year three or year four there as a senior. I know it's not always pretty seeing a guy stay four years, but context is always needed, especially when you play in a room like that with four first round picks. And then John Mechie, who is a second round pick, but like you said, 6'1", 208. It seems like that's almost like the sweet spot for the wide receiver position. Like he's he's big, he's physical. And the best thing about him is he's fast. Like he led the entire class in yards per reception this year with 21.9. So he excels downfield as a vertical threat. So it's almost like he's so good in the contested catch situations. Like he makes so many just acrobatic plays downfield that it's like, okay, how like is this guy a one to like what Tez Walker is and what, the NFL wants him to be is what Javon Baker actually is. And he's right. so much better at other like aspects of the game. 3.0 plus yards per route run this year. Like he was just absolutely dominating at UCF. And and I always like to look at like competition as well. They were a power five school and they weren't really a joke of a team. Like UCF kind of always sneaks into that ranked ish type of like top 20, top 25, especially the past two years. And Javon Baker was a guy that, basically carried that offense like he dominated their all the team's target shares the reception shares the market shares or everything and i think there's another guy there kobe hudson who's actually like an nfl level talent Mm -hmm. that i wasn't familiar with but watching javon baker i was like yo this guy can play ball as well so it's like 
seeing like him produce in a room with other potential NFL talent is also huge because it's not like Sky Moore at Western Michigan, right? Where he's playing with guys like me that are at home recording podcasts now. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting to see that type of stuff. But I, I have a few stats I want to rattle off about Jerome Baker. Bear with me. I can usually memorize stats, but this is a lot of them. So I haven't been able to memorize them yet. But 17.1 A dot, which was third in the class, mm-hmm. 7.2 yards after catch per reception, which is massive, it be huge for that because you see a guy that's such a good vertical threat be able to make plays after the catch as well. This was third in the class. So he is really good after the catch, which is really big. It unlocks that like high level ceiling in fantasy football. Like you saw what Jalen Waddle was able to do after the catch. He was super efficient. He averaged like 18 yards per catch. Not this past year, but the year before that. And he was also second in the class in EPA per play with 1.47, 3.42 yards per out run versus man, 3.52 yards per out run versus zone. If you hit like that two and a half yards per out run plus like threshold, like I consider that strong. Mm -hmm. And like if you're hitting threes, like you're 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 Mm -hmm. producing at a high level and like he you could tell Javon Baker was too good to be at UCF. It probably should have stayed at Bama. And what I had is time in year three and year four to shine. But it's almost like he probably was just like, I just want to go and I want to play now. And I want to guarantee that I play and I want to make myself a name to be an NFL draft pick. But he also had 1,139 receiving yards, which was ninth amongst the entire class. Draft eligible and not the whole entire class, but draft eligible wide receivers. 3.11 receiving yards per team pass attempt. That and yards per outrun are the two metrics that I always focus on the most. Like I'm not a big analytic guy, but like those two are the two that I'll really heavily involve in my prospect grading process. And then a lot of people like weighted dominator rating. I just threw that in there, 0.33%, which was sixth among the class. So his 2023 season was top eight to 10 in every single important metric that you look for in a wide out. And I'm just kind of curious if either of you have gotten to dive into him a lot. And what if some of the things you saw, because I have an NFL comp of Devonte Parker because like Devontae Parker was really good on the Dolphins, excelled downfield, great in contested sets situations, yeah. good after the catch, just a good athlete. He was in that six one six two mold as well. I think that's a safe comp for him where you're not getting too crazy, but you're getting like a, a decent floor and a def- decent ceiling outcome. Yeah, injuries <laughs> held Parker down you yeah. know, from, from some potentially big seasons uh, through there. Uh, Austin, what are, you, what are your thoughts on, on Baker? Yeah, man. When I was watching some film on Baker, some things that stood out to me, like what mattered most, he had good college production at the end of the day. And that's that's something that is always going to be vital, right? And by good college production, I mean over 2,000 plus career collegiate yards, right? Good number. Very, very promising number. He has real NFL size. You guys touched on that. I'll keep it short, right? Uh, consistent splash plays. That That's important, man. If you can if you can consistently, and I mean throughout his entire college career, 17.5 career yards per reception, right? That's a great number. Like this year, it was 21.9, I believe, yards per reception. Again, outstanding, even better. So we love to see that. And Javon Baker... The fact that he was able to separate with ease at the Senior Bowl, I mean, dude, like that—that's—that's that's amazing. That's exactly what we wanted to see, and and I'm hoping for relatively early day three NFL draft capital. I don't know how early day three he could go, but if he, man, if he could sneak into like early round four. Oh, dude, I, I think he would shoot up a lot of people's boards in uh, dynasty rookie drafts, and uh, you know he's going to be someone that. At this point, man, I feel like everybody knows who he is. And the fact that he was able to just thrive at the Senior Bowl, I mean, he's no secret anymore. I, I wish he was, but, you know. Yeah, me I too. Mean, I wish he was. He, he, he was fantastic at UCF. Uh, he, he dominated the second he stepped foot on campus. It's not like he got there and, like, gradually increased. It was like, no, dude, I'm... I'm the man on campus. Like I'm the big man on campus. I am, I am him. Uh, he was, he, he was just, he was literally the best player on the field in, in so many games for UCF. It felt like, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So do you, uh, do you think he's going to be a guy who tests well or will you think the combine will, will hurt him? Cause it, when I was kind of watching, I didn't see like, like the speed didn't jump off the page at you. Uh, but it was it's clearly there like he he what what jumps off the page with all the stats was like you said with Tez Walker. Um, he seems to be a vertical threat 
uh, you know, game in, game out. But is the testing going to maybe hurt him a little bit? Or do you feel it just doesn't seem like he's going to put out blazing numbers, but he does have the good size. So what are yeah. your thoughts there? No, I I think it'll benefit him. I, I think that his ceiling here, let me word this correctly. I think that his stock can continue to rise. I don't think it's peaked by any means. Um, and I'm anticipating more of like slot and motion pre-snap type of utilization uh, by the team that ends up drafting him. Ho- again, hopefully we're talking, I- I'm hoping it's the fourth round, maybe fifth round for Javon Baker. But I, yeah, man, I, th- I think his stock is going to continue to rise during this process, during this off season. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think, I have him right now as a day two prospect. I haven't given like a full grade on him yet, but I wouldn't be shocked if he's a third or a second round pick. I do think he ran 21 point. He was clocked in at 21.9 miles per hour, 21 plus on a few plays this year. I think he's going to be in the four, four, five ish, Mm -hmm. four, four, eight range. Like I think he's going to run good and his jumping and his athletic ability. I think he's going to have a really good vertical a good comp, like a realistic, like floor-ish type comp for him, I think, is Dontavian Wicks. Mm-hmm. I was really high on him as a prospect as well, mm-hmm. and he just absolutely tanked his 40 time and ran like a 4.67. Yeah. If he didn't do that, he probably was a day two pick because right. he had strong production. He had the torn ACL, which is why he stayed an extra year. But Wicks was a guy like he's produced at the NFL level as a fifth-round pick, 500-plus yards, missed a few games like – he's promising and he gained a lot of value this off season. So I think with Javon Baker, like his seamless body control, the way he can make acrobatic plays and adjust to the ball while it's in the air, like he's really good at a few things. And like, that's what separates him from like being just a vertical threat. Like right. you got guys like Jalen Hyatt and Tez Walker who are only good at that downfield. But like you saw the yards after catch per reception, the, the ability to make acrobatic plays and adjust to the ball and make contested catches. Like, that's kind of what separates like just being a vertical threat and being an actual like good wide receiver. And I wouldn't be shocked if he ends up being like a solid good number two on a team. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that there's that you're getting number one production necessary. Like he's not going to go over and be a, a true number one for a team. I, I don't think, but I do think that if he does put together a good 40 time that it's going to, or good combine showing it'll, it'll put him yeah. into that day two, day three, capital range and you know that's that that can be important i I don't weight it a terrible amount for myself personally but i know overall it it definitely plays a factor um you know we've done a decent amount of rookie mocks here i don't think i've seen baker and any of them go in the second round of you know a super flex tight end premium rookie mock like as far as uh, you know for not the nfl draft but so where where do you feel comfortable drafting him currently uh what were who are some players that you would take ahead of him snoog or I know sleeper doesn't even have them on right right yeah yeah they need to add wow. him and right right's not on there either you can't get yeah. Jalen right on sleeper right now and then they got horton on there and horton's going <laughs> like what's happening yeah i don't think sleepers <laughs> figured it out yet javon baker right now as of today before the combine it's tough for me to put him higher because i don't know if he's going to be a day two pick so that could change. Like Austin mm-hmm. said, he's more likely than not, it's projecting that he's a like a round four guy. But he's my wide receiver nine slash eight-ish in this class. I actually have him above Keon Coleman, which is kind of a mm-hmm. hot topic. But it's like hard to confirm that because I just know Keon Coleman's going to get better draft capital and probably get more opportunity. So once that happens, I'll, I'll make the switch. But I just think Javon Baker, I, I think there's a real world where he, he's going to be the value in second round of rookie drafts or early third. But I would definitely take him in the second round. Like I would probably take him. I haven't dove into the running backs completely right. or graded right. them out, but I've like watched them all like and like pretty decently. But I, I would probably take him over a decent amount of the running backs, assuming he goes day two. Oh, OK. Yeah. A little, yeah. little caveat in there. It, it does. You know, like you said, I. I I think there is some added value because I do think he's he's pretty decent in the short to intermediate game, but it definitely was the vertical game that you know puts you yeah. in these thresholds for a lot of these numbers. It does seem to me that there's like there seems to be a lot of receivers in this class who are definitely stronger, seemingly in the vertical game than some of the yeah. shorter and intermediate. Have you been finding that as as at least going through on this initial run through on these guys? 
Yeah, I have. I don't know about you, Austin, but I mean, we have Adonai Mitchell, Keon Coleman, Javon Baker, Des, Tez Walker. A lot of these guys are I mean, excelling. Even Brian field. Thomas Jr. and and <laughs> Troy Franklin are both. BT, I think BT is just unbelievable at it. Like he, the way he moves at his size, that's yeah, for another yeah. day. I could talk about Brian Thomas Jr. all day. But Austin, what have you found kind of more so about this wide receiver class excelling vertically and I, do you think that has to do with the way the game's changing becoming more pass heavy pushing the ball downfield more so uh, yeah short answer is is yes i do think that the game is transitioning i also think the rules play a vital part in this argument or discussion um you know you can't touch a quarterback anymore uh, you know th- yeah. this league is now set up for high scoring more points um lighting up the scoreboard and ultimately it's probably all beneficial for college football and the NFL because at the end of the day man it probably generates more revenue right and at the end of the day the NFL and college probably just cares about money more than anything like <laughs> sure. let's just be let's just be honest yeah and uh so I think it all kind of ra- ties in together um but getting back to the 2024 receiving class I mean we're talking about not only are these players great at dominating vertically but this is a big class dude the other day i tweeted out the size of of some of these guys i i should probably pull it up real quick but it it was alarming at how big the uh 2024 class was like like these receivers in comparison to the 2023 class yeah. i mean they're just they're just giants marvin harrison jr who's six four you got keon coleman who's six four johnny wilson is six foot seven uh like i'm just ripping off the top of my head um Brian Thomas Jr. is what six foot four as well. Like the uh, the Xavier Worthy's up there, he's six one. Whatever. Troy Franklin six three, I think. Roma Dunes a six three. Like AD Mitchell. all of these, right, right. AD Mitchell six four. Thank you. And um, I mean Xavier Leggett came in at I think six one. We thought he was six three, but I, again, like this dude, this class is just it, it's a big class. And uh, and then you you kind of pivot to the running backs. You got some other big big dogs like Braylon Allen's just 6'2", 245. I mean, this class as a whole is just huge. And, you know, me as a sizist, the leader of the sizist, Katie, <laughs> Casey knows I'm never going to be mad about these prospects just being big dogs. Like, it's it's never going to be a knock on these guys, right? And at the end of the day, what's most important is being able to separate and just being good at ball. But when you're big too, man, it's it's just a plus. That's how I look at it. Yeah for sure all right well let's pivot to another guy who we, we got a lot of vertical guys um you know and, we, and we're, we're talking a little bit of everybody's a little bigger so last year we had a bunch of small kings now we got some bigger kings but here i think on the this next guy lad mcconkey we have a guy who is definitely dominating in the middle intermediate out in breaking type of routes uh but also you know coming in at six foot 185 Still not a small guy. Uh, definitely room to, to bulk up a little bit. Uh, only played seven games, not including playoffs. Usually when I talk about prospects, I don't include playoffs or bowl games just to keep everybody, you know, kind of on the even playing field. But missed time with a back injury and then had an ankle injury as well. But like I said, all of these guys had their st- uh, stock elevated uh, at the senior bowl here. So, uh, Snoo, give me your thoughts on on Lad here. Yeah, I mean, he's a guy that I've actually really, really started to like a lot during the process. I mean, he's a nuanced route runner, just Mm. explosive in Mm. short areas. You love to see that, right? Like, he's tied third for most career yards after catch per reception, which is huge. Like, that yak brings a big up unlocked potential to their game and lads one of the best at it right like he was a guy that dominated in the yak aspect alongside brock bowers every year at georgia he is just explosive off the line of scrimmage he's got that long speed too a lot of people projecting him in the four threes as a runner i think he's going to be a great slot receiver at the nfl level and i think he can right now i like to put my wide receivers in like tiers before Mm -hmm. i really see draft capital and stuff but Right now, he's like anywhere between my seven and ten. Like he's right now, he's eight, right behind Adonai Mitchell. But like I, I honestly can see him going over Adonai Mitchell, especially with draft capital. But right now, I have it: Mitchell, Lad, Baker, and Keon Coleman in that seven through ten tier. But I think Lad is 
the the concerns are definitely the injuries, like you mentioned, sure, Casey. Sure. That, that's definitely a red flag. Like he really struggled to stay on the field and stay healthy. And another thing I noticed while watching his tape was he kind of drops the ball a lot, especially concentrate concentration drops and downfield he dropped a lot of passes but then there's times you're like wow he has unbelievable hands in traffic so very inconsistent with the hands and and i he only played in 39 career games so like the injuries is definitely like something you look at and maybe nfl teams look at that as a red flag which they usually do but otherwise i mean he's just so great after the catch and i one thing that i found that when I was diving through the analytic process with him, only two wide receivers in this class ever posted 4.0 plus yards per out run versus zone. And it was Malik Neighbors and Lad McConkey. 4.0 yeah. plus yards per out run in general. It was just those two. And he had a career 3.26 yards per out run. So when he's on the field and he's running routes, he's getting yards. And that's what matters with him is if you're playing, are you getting yards every time you're running the ball? Are you getting targets? Are you commanding? the ball are you the main focal point of your offense it's hard to be like that with brock bowers but he was like that with brock bowers and he played with that and i mitchell and he played with george pickens so he's been on the best of the best team national championship two-time winner playing alongside a generational tight end prospect and potentially two second round prospects in george pickens and Adai mitchell mitchell might even squeeze into the late first who knows but I mean, he, he's he got the resume. He's got the track record with being an elite player after the catch, slot dominant wide receiver. Injuries, is that going to hold them back? I guess we'll find out. But definitely upside to see seven or maybe even that six top five range in this class. Yeah, how about yeah. how about you, Austin? How are we'll you a, how are you feeling about Ladd? Yeah, so I was digging into Ladd, man. Two for five in contested catches this year, right? Not, not you know, small sample size, 40%. Um, again, we would have loved for him to just be healthy so we could have seen him play more ball, just have a better uh, evaluation on him in 2023. You know, standing at six foot, 185 pounds, it's fine, right? Like, it's perfectly fine. He, he can succeed in the NFL. Uh, so I, I want to go back a little bit. As a sophomore, man, seventh most valuable wide receiver per PFF war, right? We're talking 2022. It stood out to me. I was like, Damn, I didn't, I didn't realize like Lad McConkey was actually that valuable back in 2022. 42 of 58 receptions went for first downs, by the way. So every time he touched the ball, he was doing something really, really good for Georgia. Uh, top five in rushing yards for wide receiver. And this is all 2022 that I'm yapping about right now. Uh, I just, again, found that interesting. Do we have the white Debo Samuel? I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just joking. But uh, Lad McConkey was a fun eval, man. Uh, player comp I saw was like, John Mechie kind of kind of was one of the first guys to come to mind. Um, so hopefully doesn't end up performing like that necessarily in the NFL. But I, I noticed that lad, he thrived in intermediate routes, right? When I, when I was watching the tape, I thought he was great with his releases. Uh, he genuinely reminded me of Hunter Renfro, right? And, and that might be a very lazy take, but that's seriously what I saw when I put on the film and I was watching the tape. Um, He's just a strong route runner. Lad McConkey has remarkable hand-eye coordination. And uh, he's no longer like quietly this sleeper wide receiver, right? And and this is dating back to a few months now. I would say that consensus has already come around on him. And I think a lot of people are going to be targeting him in dynasty rookie drafts. Yeah, this this um this might have been my favorite guy to watch so far. I, I've, mm -hmm. I've I've gotten through a decent amount of wide receivers. Uh, like you said, six foot one eighty five, so not small by any means. And he's projected right now from the mock draft database. Take that for what it is to have the highest draft capital out of all the guys we're talking about right now. Yeah, oh, um, yeah. which you know it is good. I, you know, it's got to be part of your you know evaluation on these guys. But what really stood out, you talked about Brock Bowers and him. Just the just watching those two guys play and the understanding that he had of of the concepts of what they were doing and how best to just utilize the spacing of what Brock Bowers and the attention he was getting uh, to put him in the positions to make his moves and just such a fluid mover. Uh, the, the start stop is outstanding. The jabs, the jabs are nonstop. He just, a lot of these guys that we've, that we've gone through, at least on this show that are some of the higher up guys, I feel like they, they're not the best intermediate quick start stop movers. They've got a lot of good parts and pieces of the game, 
But mm-hmm. his fluidity really, really stood out to me. It's just easy separator uh, was was kind of what I came away from. And like like we talked about with this class being a lot of vertical threats, uh, you know, I think Lad McConkey's kind of like something that a lot of teams really need in the league. He can mm-hmm. just keep the chains moving for you, just understanding spacing and concepts of what's going on already. And then, you know, like you said, at the senior bowl, Javon Baker was out there cooking on one-on-ones, you know, McConkey was unguardable seemingly, you know, I know it's yeah. one-on-ones. I don't like to get too caught up and that's not really how you play football. Uh, but when you go and put the tape on, you can see how much he understands like, all right, this is the concept of what's happening. I need to be right here. Uh, I need to sit in this zone right here. Brock's mm-hmm. going to clear this out. I'm going to go right here. I'm going to pick this little spot. I'm going to sit right down. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then punt return skills, uh, you know, come out as soon as that ball's in his hand. He's, he was, you know, a punt returner, got punt returning skills. And when the ball's in his hands, like you guys said, uh, there is some good yak ability there. And, you know, I don't want to take away from the possibility of him scoring on a deep shot too, because as you mentioned in the beginning of this uh, snoog, that there is some good wheels there and he can get a little vertical. It's just not something yeah. that is done over and over with him. Um, so I, I, I really like him. He's, he's definitely moved up the charts for me. He's probably sitting right outside the Troy Franklin, Brian Thomas jr. Range for me right now. Um, if not kind of maybe getting in there. Cause I just feel like what he brings to the table He's not maybe not going to score in chunks like those two guys mentioned, but I feel like PPR wise, he's just going to be a, an accumulator of of points, drive in, drive out. Um, yeah. So, absolutely. And what Austin mentioned, how good he was with first downs. Like mm-hmm. when the when he gets targeted, good things happen. Yeah. He was first amongst the entire class, the whole wide receiver class that we're talking about, all the prospects, in first downs per target with fifty two percent, which is like an absurd rate. So when he was on the field running routes he was elite and that's like the pedigree brock bowers george pickens adai mitchell and like you could argue like stetson bennett and carson beck they're like solid college quarterbacks but like they're not like joe burrow caleb williams cj stroud like it would have been cool to see lab mcconkey play with cj stroud on ohio state and like the emeka buka role because he Mm -hmm. probably would have thrown up 1200 yards (laughs) and scored a ton but one thing that stood out with me, like the elite route running, obviously, the way he, like Austin mentioned, top five in rushing yards at the precision, there was this one play that he got. It was like an end around, and it was like supposed to get blown up in like the backfield for like a loss of 10 yards, and he ended up scoring like a 45-yard touchdown on it. His starts to up ability and his elusiveness in open field is just unmatched, and that's yeah. Yeah. kind of where he does separate himself in this class is he's so different than every other wide receiver, and like, Like you said, Casey, I can see him jumping into that next year with like right now I have it like Brian Thomas, Troy Franklin, Xavier Worthy. I'm honestly like seconds away from putting Lab McConkey up in there and above Adam Mitchell and putting him in there with those guys because I think the draft capital is pretty safe to say. Senior Bowl standout. I know you said the one-on-one things. It is tough to value off that because it's not real football, but – they're in pads. They're still running routes. It, it shows how you can positive, separate. You know, it's not a negative. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he, he looked phenomenal. Like the standouts, Javon Baker was one of them, but Lad was probably head and shoulders, the biggest standout from the senior bowl. So, and he, he clocked in, I think his official senior bowl was like five eleven and a half, like one ninety two or something. Mm-hmm. My comp for him, it's, it's like, Kind of silly to say Cooper Cup, even though he reminds me a lot of him. I think the best comp is like Robert Woods, because like Robert Woods was literally like a less version of Cooper Cup all years in LA. And he was really, really, really solid as a slot receiver, could make plays downfield after the catch, good route runner, good at everything. And I think that's kind of like that lad ceiling. It's like hard to tell you guys that he's going to be a 400 point fantasy points who are like Cooper Cup was. But I think like being a low on wide receiver one, high on wide receiver two, like Robert Woods for a few years is realistic as a ceiling outcome. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, there's certainly some room to put some weight on the frame a little bit there. But, I, you know, I don't think it'll get too bulky. He was 75 percent out wide, 24 percent in the slot. I think, like you said, he'll probably he, he will potentially be a little bit more of a slot guy, but I can see he can yeah. be a Z. He can yeah. be a guy that you, you know, he, you don't need him to be up on the line. So he's a little less 
getting pressed all the time. You know, I think all these guys, and if, if you know, I don't know if you're going to be on the worthy show, but I like worthy a good bit. And any, every time there's a smaller framed guy, it's like, oh, they struggle with press. Yeah. I mean, of course, they, I don't want Lad McConkey getting pressed mm-hmm. all the time. That'd be stupid. <laughs> yeah. Like, why, why are you going to, you know? Yeah. But that being said, like he, he does have a nice release. He's, he's pretty quick. I, you know, I, I, the guys who are big and can get it, listen, you better jam him. And if you're up on that line, you, you better get your hands on him. Cause if you don't, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, And the way the new NFL is with the coaching staffs is like motioning and motioning and motioning these wide receivers, getting match, uh, getting the matchup that they want, getting Lad McConkey on linebackers is just going to be bread and butter. And if he falls into the right coaching staff, like imagine him in Kansas City in round two, like alongside Rashi Rice, just in that Andy Reid hands of just getting motioned around, kind of like what they try to do with Kadarius, Tony and Sky Moore, but someone that's actually good at football. So that'd be (laughs) interesting to see him there. Yeah. For sure. Uh, Austin, you got anything on, on lab before we move on? Uh, I mean, uh, final thing I'll say, man, I'm anticipating second round NFL draft capital. Uh, he could be a first round pick if he had better collegiate production. I think that's the only thing that's really yeah. holding him back. Right. That was, of course, due to injuries. Right. Durability. Um, but, you know, he he, fl- he flashed at the, at the bowl. He uh He's got the size, man. He's got the the tape is there. It, it's just the production. And at the end of the day, you could say that's the most important thing. I'm not going to disagree with you. It's just that's the only thing that really is separating him from being a a late first round pick. And uh, but but it's fine, man. Like he's still going to be I, I, at this point. I really think it's going to be closer to pick. 40 to 50 range in the NFL draft. I think it's going to be closer to that 40 to 45 overall. Mm -hmm. Uh, We still got a a long ways to go, right? We still got the combine. We still got a long way to go, but uh, he's, he's going to get some pretty nice draft capital. Lad McConkey. Yeah, I I think so too. Like I said, in the beginning of this, he's, he's definitely got the highest projected out of the guys we're talking about today. And, and I, you know, I would, I think if I'm an NFL team, I think I'd, I feel like I'm getting a little bit more of a sure thing with lad than I am with AD Mitchell. Like I, I like AD just fine, but you know, yeah. if I had, I'd, I'm fine with their draft capital being reversed too, you know? Same. Yeah. Um, I so, agree with that. Dave. All right. Um, let's move on to, to the last guy, Roman Wilson, uh, in, in a bit of an offense that didn't have to throw the ball a ton, I guess you, you could phrase it that way. I don't know if anybody's a huge Michigan guy or anti Michigan over here. Uh, but, you didn't you didn't get to see maybe all of the things that Roman Wilson can do just because of potentially the offense that he was in. But again, the senior bowl goes all of a sudden he's he's hot and nobody can cover him. So, uh, Snoog, you've, you've let us off on, on all these. So I'll let you lead us off on the last one. What's your thoughts on on Roman Wilson mock draft database, third round draft capital right now? Um, so somewhere in between these two guys that we're talking about. Yeah, I, I think he's right in that like second to fourth round draft range. I think. I mean, he's another guy. He's almost like in that, like that Lad McConkey mold, like the elite agility. He was a touchdown machine at Michigan, mm-hmm. 18 touchdowns in the past two years. He had 12 this past year on a team that, like you said, Casey, they didn't throw the ball much. But when they did, Roman Wilson was the go-to guy, and he made plays when they needed it. Against Ohio State, he made some crazy plays. Like this kid has mitts, senior bowl standout. He was Right. I, I literally think we're talking about the three best wide receivers at the senior bowl <laughs> yeah. right now, which is cool. Cause like that matters. Like last year we had Puka, who was a senior bowl standout. You had Dontavian Wicks, who was a super bowl, like senior bowl standout. Like mm-hmm. that matters. Cause that's, there's a bunch of good seniors every year coming into the draft and the best of the best ones will shine the most in those type of situations. How can you separate versus man? Can you make plays when you're covered? Roman Wilson absolutely snapped that DB's ankles and turned and caught that one-handed pass. Like we, we didn't get to see him do that all the time at Michigan because he wasn't asked to do that. Right. Like he was just dominating the slot, making plays downfield, but I definitely do see a little bit of nuance in his route running. He can separate well. He makes good plays after the catch. He's basically like a less souped up version of Lab McConkey. I would say I don't have an NFL comp for him right now. I honestly don't have too, too much on him. He's my wide receiver 11 as of right now with room to grow. Like I could see him being in that 10 range, maybe nine range, but I, I think, I mean, he played, five games in his true freshman season. And then the next three, like 420 yards, 376 yards, 
six touchdowns. Like he always found a way to get into the end zone, even on the heaviest run team in the, in the whole college football. I think if he was on like an Alabama or if he was on an LSU, like he would have been able to be a thousand yard guy. And I think he's honestly more fit for the NFL than he was in college football because you tend to see a lot more vertical threats and like athletic guys and like speed guys dominate in college football rather than like the small speedy slot guys. I could see him finding himself a role in the NFL where he's like the go-to slot guy. And he's like in like that golden Tate type mold is like a ceiling outcome, but mm, loves I'm excited tape. for him. He's got mitts for hands. I've seen him make some crazy catches. So yeah, no, he, uh, he, he was out, out, out wide a little more this year. He was 91% in 2022. And then, um, in the slot and then 65% in the slot this year. So got a little versatility there. So, you know, you don't hate to see that, but I think you're right. I think you'll mostly see him in the slot at the next level. Uh, really, really fast and came up in big spots. You know, they didn't, like I said, didn't throw it a lot. You got the game at Penn state. You're, you're looking at a goose egg, but that didn't have anything to do with, with Rome. You know, that's just kind of what it was. They just didn't throw yeah. the ball. The national championship, he made a huge mm-hmm. play or two. And there's a bunch of those throughout this whole game log. There's a big play in a lot of those games. Uh, but, you know, when you throw the ball, you attempt 18 passes the national championship. You know, that yeah. basically tells you what it is. Yeah. Um, so, Austin, what do you got on on Rome for us? Man, anytime we talk about a Michigan player, it's a tough eval just because of how their offense was run this year. Right. What Casey, what did you say? 30 consecutive rushing attempts earlier this year against Penn State. Correct. Some, right? it was, I don't, it was, yeah, it was something, something crazy absurd like that. like that. And uh, it just makes our job even more difficult to to evaluate these players because, you know, they weren't utilized that, you know, to the best of their ability. Uh, they didn't have to. Right. They just didn't have to. But Roman Wilson, man, we're talking 22 years old, five foot ten. 190 pounds, almost 800 yards this year and 12 touchdowns, right? Really, really good season for, for again, the scheme, the offense from, from Michigan, 16.4 yards per reception. You love to see it again, nice, big playability. And he allegedly runs a four, three, seven, 40 time that it would be good for 90th percentile. Like Roman Wilson can really move like that, man. And uh, he, he crushed, he crushed at the senior bowl, right? He, I, I'll tell you what, excelling at the NFL combine on top of what he did at the senior bowl would only bolster his NFL draft capital even more. Right. And, and I'm kind of anticipating that happening. I think he's going to test well, uh, and, and keep this in mind, man, in 2023, Roman Wilson emerged. He, he, I would say this is the year he truly emerged as that playmaking threat for Michigan, right? He produced at a higher level than ever. Uh, he flashed vertically, he did a lot of things right, and uh, this kid, he, ju- he just adjusts so quickly, man, on, especially on deep balls. Uh, scored a touchdown on 25% of his receptions in 2023. Never going to be mad about that, and he was highly proficient in intermediate routes. So I'm excited to see how this kid tests. Um, I think, again, his stock is going to continue to rise, so he's, uh, he's, he's, he should heavily be on your radar. Yeah, I don't think I don't think there's any doubt that that Wilson and and McConkey are going to test really well. Baker's the only one who I don't think it'll be bad, but he's just a, such a different prospect and and a bit mm-hmm. bigger build. Um yeah. but dominant in his own right. So, uh anything to to wrap us up on the way out, Snoop? No, I think that I think we hit it on the head with these three guys. I mean, these were the three guys that stood out the most at the senior bowl. They flashed elite production at the at the college level and they're all really good at certain things. So I think there's a real good chance that we just talked about three top 10 wide receivers in the 2024 class. And my goal is just to keep putting up Javon Baker tweets and <laughs> keep trying to sell people on him. And it's been working. I mean, it seems like he's been building up some hype, especially post senior bowl. I think, I think there's a good chance that he finds his way into day two. Yeah. A lot of those, a lot of the visual visualization charts that you're seeing coming out, Baker's Baker's in a lot of favorable yeah, no, yeah, spots, he does. you know? So that's, that's Absolutely. a, that's a good, that's always good to see. And, and I, he was a lot of fun to watch a lot of fun to get to know here. So, um, where can we find everything Snoog one more time? Yeah. If you just follow me at FF Snoog on Twitter, I have a link tree set up. I got everything in there. My Patreon, my podcast with dynasty dad, FF, make sure you follow him as well. And then 
all my work's coming from Twitter or in the podcast. So if you're looking for more exclu- exclusive stuff, more like one-on-one stuff, the Patreon's great for that. We have a 200 plus member community built up. We got good moderators in there. That chat's blowing up 24 seven. So if you need help with trades and stuff like that, there's your spot. But anyways, my DMs are open 24 seven as well. So make sure you shoot me a DM if you have any questions. And Austin, you guys, you, you two, you guys are just crushing the Twitter. So make sure you follow Snoog and, and uh, Austin. Where can we find everything at, bud? Yeah, man, at Austin Abbott FF on Twitter. I post a few times a day, just really trying to focus on draft draft content, right? That's that's what I honestly enjoy the most. NFL draft weekend is my favorite weekend of the year. It's not a debate. It's it's just a fact at this point. It is the best weekend of the year. So uh, I'm excited, man, and uh, I just I just love talking draft content. So uh, I appreciate y'all, and uh, this has been a good episode, man. This is this has been fun. I love talking about this 2024 class. Be sure to go follow those guys to keep you guys up to date. The Smash Accept pod is between you and uh, who's the Smash Accept dad or what? what what's what's your boy? Dynasty dad. Dynasty dad. You guys are always, you know, between y'all three, Snoog, Dynasty dad and, and Austin, you could you could get everything you really need to know via Twitter there. So make sure you go follow those accounts. Uh, If you're not already, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Five star review on the podcast. You can hit us up on the discord uh, through the Patreon with a little five dollar holler. Get you in there. We're we're building ADP right now. Uh, We got dynasty content. We got rookie content. And after the after the uh, combine, we'll be crushing uh, more and more rookie content uh, because then we will know everything we need to know after the combine. Yeah, that's when it gets real. Yeah, yeah. Uh, So very much appreciate you guys. Nice to meet you, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Peace.